human interiority, human consciousness, and human action in relation to the natural world and the cosmos itself, which is one of the great avenues into the universe story. While I was there, though, studying the language, Mao came in, when Mao came in, the university sent us back to the state. He was probably providential because what it meant was that he came back and instead established himself as a missionary in a much larger sense. Of course, Teilhard was uh, his inspiration, and uh, and I suppose that was another another thing that he missed about having to leave China that he couldn't explore more of Teilhard's time there. Teilhard was a Jesuit who was trained in paleontology who was following up some of the work of Darwin in evolution and especially emphasizing the development of consciousness alongside of the physical evolution of humankind and of all species. Teilhard is the first person to understand that we have a sacred story now that has to be our basic orientation toward the universe. And he also understood that the universe from its beginning is, is a spiritual as well as a physical reality. There's no such thing as a material being. You cannot even know matter. Matter without form is nothing. And form is always spiritual. Teilhard gave the big view of the encounter of religions. He really didn't enter into them. But Tom made them come alive. And I think this is one of the great creative moments between Tom and Teilhard. And then there was another one, and that is bringing out the ecological issues, which certainly Teilhard did not address. In 1969, Thomas Berry established the Riverdale Center for Religious Research on the banks of the Hudson. It was a center in the full sense of the word. It was an intellectual center, it was a friendship center, it was a community creating center. And he was just beginning to come into this fuller phase of his life as a geologian, of beginning to see the universe story emerge. So to be a student of Thomas at that time was a time out of time. The Riverdale Sun it was founded as a place where a person could come to understand the universe in its meaning dimension and to bring together the wisdom of the various traditions uh, of the world. And here is the polytext of Buddhism, which is the wisdom of indigenous people, the wisdom of women, the wisdom of the classical traditions, and the wisdom of science. Buddhist world. He had collected thousands of volumes of Western history, culture, religions, and the same for Asia and indigenous traditions, but then also the Jungian tradition, Mircea Eliade, and the scientific wisdom that was coming out. Right here in India is the Sanskrit world. This is the Mahabharata, which is the the basic uh, epic uh, poem of uh, India. One evening, Father Thomas gave a paper based upon his own studies of Buddhism. And when it was all over, this uh, Buddhist monk said, I felt as if I was hearing my old teacher back in Japan. So you're so moved. Buddhist world, you have to know, Pali, Sanskrit, Tibetan, Chinese, Japanese, and all those four. There names. probably were people who were more technically competent as Sanskritists than he was. But I question whether there's anybody who was able to penetrate into the essence of those religious systems the way he was. To be in his classes was to open the doors to these great traditions, was to sit with him and feel that wisdom. 
And I would say Riverdale, of all things, is a birthing of the great work. It's a birthing of a vision, of a new sensibility about the universe and our connection to it. Each period of history has a great work to do. And to identify that great work is most important and the nobility of the lives of the people of that period depends on their fidelity to the great work and the extent to which they carry it out. Here at the research center in Riverdale, this has been identified with a clarity that few other places could equal. We've identified the issue and also the conditions under which this devastation can be stopped and which the renewal can take place. And this depends on something very, very simple. What is the cause of the difficulty in the first place? The cause of the difficulty in the first place has to do with the discontinuity between the human and the non-human and the assumption of the human that they have rights to exploit the non-human. St. Thomas says, why are there so many uh, different things? And he says, because the divine could not image itself forth in any one being, it created a great diversity of things, so that the perfection lacking to one would be supplied by the others, and the whole universe together would participate in and manifest the divine more than any single being whatsoever. Things cannot be envisaged simply in their isolated selves, because nothing is itself without everything else. And that is why in the total story of the universe, it has taken 14 billion years to have us here. The greatest failure of, of Western civilization, or the greatest destructive force, comes with the type of jurisprudence that shaped America because we wrote a constitution that gave all the rights to humans and the non-human has no rights. It's simply there as background for the human. Well, that, to my mind, is an inadequate way of understanding the human, because the human is a member of the great community of the planet Earth, and everything is there for a communion relationship, not for a use relationship. And that's the flaw. And when we get a America based on four things, individual rights, participatory government, private property, and the exploitative enterprise. And these first three have now become subservient to the economic enterprise. The government is defamed in all its efforts to limit the exploitation of the corporation regime. The whole of education is based on the service of the corporation. And so that we're giving ourselves over to the, the, to the great financial, industrial, commercial corporations. What we are faced with is a transformation of the planet itself, because the planet and its chemistry is being upset in such a way that the life forms are no longer viable and how to renew the planet when it's saturated with chemical waste uh, at uh, such an order of magnitude is an extremely arduous task. In fact, in the 1940s there was a half a million tons of industrial chemicals made in this country. Now we're making 200 million tons each year. Chemicals that the planet Earth cannot deal with. And the extinctions that are taking place have not been equal in 65 million years. The geological period now ending due to the impact of human activity is the Cenozoic. Thomas Berry sees the Cenozoic as an immensely creative period for the flourishing of wildly diverse life forms. He writes, If moments such as dawn and dusk, 
birth and death and the seasons are of such significance, how awesome must be the present moment when we witness the dying of the earth in its Cenozoic expression. <laughs>